going to talk to our man Teddy Kegstaff. Folks, if you head on over to the front page of TFNN, under the newsletters tab, you'll see the Tiger Forex report. Teddy puts out an outstanding report every Monday, folks, with updates throughout the week when warranted. You can just hit the subscribe button. It's $97 for the month, folks. You gain access to a webinar. He has in there as well. There's your $97. You get it for a month. You get the 60-minute webinar in there as well. Forex strategies and fundamentals. What is behind the Tiger Forex Report newsletter? And you get a money-back guarantee. You keep it for 30 days. You're not happy. It's not something you can use. You can't slip. Get your money back. You can't go wrong, folks. Check it out on the front page. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. So where do we go, Teddy? We got crude catching a little bit of a bid this week, but still relatively lower prices considering. We have the market catching a little bit of a bid, and we got CPI numbers starting out tomorrow. Where do you want to start off in the market, Teddy? Uh, well, I like the uh, crude with the uh, higher move low that it set a couple sessions back, and I, I think it's going to be pretty stable to higher. I'm, looking, I'm not looking for a major rally, but I don't think you're going to see any type of sell-off really in the uh, crude oil market. I think it's going to be pretty stable here. So um, at least that's what I'm looking at in the short run. Pretty so, interesting. We're seeing prices, Teddy, of like seventy, mm -hmm. seventy-two dollars from a risk-reward perspective, man. With everything going on in the markets, you have China opening back up. That's some of the rhetoric going on this week. Um, mm -hmm. Pretty interesting, at least that you know that is kind of a floor of seventy bucks because risk-reward-wise, just in my own head, man, um, it'd be pretty remarkable if we if we cascade even lower prices, considering what the risks right. that are present as we go on into the winter months. Really, right now, while well, we're in the winter months, right now. Sure. Sure, exactly. I agree with you 100 percent. So, yeah, I think yeah. that the, 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 it, as far as the potential for a move, the downside, there's not that much there. I would look to be a buyer of breaks in, in the crude oil for sure. Nice. Uh, how about the dollar index, man? We've just been kind of cascading to a little bit of lower prices. We're at 103.21 mm -hmm. maybe this morning. What's your take on general general dollar behavior this morning? Uh, you know what? It's pretty much it's just almost like divergence is starting to happen. The only the only weakness that the dollar has today is in the euro and also in the Swiss franc. So, and I really don't. I, I would have to say, if when you look at the other markets, and and the key is if you look at what's going on with the bonds in the ten year right now, you have a three to one differential with the bonds leading the charge for lower yields right now. And usually, when you have that differential on a on a on a daily basis. You're going to have a rubber band effect, and I think that the 30-year is driving the yields lower and trying to pull the short terms down. You know, and because of that differential, you have to watch the 30-year when that falls back and starts to yields start to go up. That's going to snap back, and you're going to see that relationship close to closer to a two-to-one ratio. And if that really starts to move, that means the short the short terms, just a little bit of a pullback there, is going to bring a big pullback in the 30-year, and that would give a lift to the to the U.S. dollar. And I think that's where you'll see the euro start to pull back and also the Swiss because the dollar index as a whole is very neutral today. And if you look at it, like, the, like the Australian dollar, like the euro is making a higher move high, the, you know, against the dollar, you know, on a weekly and daily basis. But it's the only one. The pound is yeah. actually lower on the day. So, you know, and it, so the, the euro is, is the biggest part of the dollar index, but the pound is the second biggest and it's not it's not moving. And, and the U.S. dollar yen is also strong with, for the dollar. So that tells me that you, you have a little bit of a divergence happening. So if you're a euro trader or a Swiss trader, I would be careful, keep my stops tight, because if you see yields pop back higher, especially with the, uh, with the big sell-off in the third year, which we could easily see. You know, I mean, unemployment, we had a spike, we had a spike low um, or high, depending on which currency pair you were trading last week, you know? So now the reality is, is, is CPI gonna do what unemployment did? You know, I mean, and, and the number that came out with the unemployment there, you know, you're talking about the Fed only doing a quarter point over the next two meetings and then stopping. Well, if unemployment keeps on staying where it's at or goes lower, the Fed's going to keep on raising rates. They want higher unemployment. They don't want lower yeah. unemployment. So then they got to fight inflation and unemployment, you know, because they want to set off. They want to touch off a recession. So if that's the still if that's their mantra and they're going to stick to it, you got to you got to factor in the Fed, put in the. The, except the factor that the market already has the, 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 the next half point factored in, okay? But if these other numbers really start to say that the Fed is not going to ease up, that means that the market doesn't, they have to start going for higher yields, meaning lower prices and also a stronger dollar as well. Yeah, what did you think of the market reaction to that non-farm payroll number? You referenced it, man. We saw unemployment drop to 3.5%. Mm -hmm. uh, wages caught a lot of attention there. But boy, I, I and we're sitting right now, that was at about 38.19. I got the spike low on that Friday on the S&Ps. We're about 140 points higher right now, challenging the highs we almost saw on Monday. 
Uh, what did you think about the market reaction? Because the market reaction was, boy, the, the wage numbers you know, are not increasing as much as the market mm -hmm. expected. So that was that, okay, are they going to start cooling wages, which will help inflation? But I kind of went back to the same thing you were saying, man, saying if we got unemployment at 3.5% right now and we have CPI coming out tomorrow, core is supposed to be 5.7%. It seems mm -hmm. like, and then, I don't know if you heard the start of the program, man, we got a meeting at the end of this month, we have one in March, and then you got to go all the way out to May. Very difficult right. for me to see how, you know, we get enough data over the course of just two or three meetings for the Fed to make any kind of dramatic change. It would kind of be shocking right now, I think, in that I, in that I form. agree with you 100%. I totally yeah. agree with you. You know, and that's where, we, you know, I've been saying this for a past late month and a half, that as we come into 2023, the Fed is not going to be raising at the aggressive rate that they were over the past sure. year. But as far as when they're stopping, um, they need to have these. The, 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 what they've been doing has been trying to curb inflation, curb this, and also yeah. raise this. And some of it has been working, and to some of it, it's not. And if those things are that important to them on their agenda, well, why would they stop raising rates? You know, and with other yeah. central banks raising rates too, it sure. cancels out a lot of it. So, I mean. The, the, this, the media is looking very short term, being like, well, they're not going to raise rates forever. Well, if you keep calling it a, a top or a bottom every single day, eventually you're going to be right. You know, yeah. and that's what they're doing right now. And I wouldn't second guess the Fed right now until we really see reactionary numbers. Now, if we have a CPI number that totally falls in line with what they're looking for and other things that really start to look like that going into the next month. Well, maybe you can start to see that maybe they'll start pausing, you know, come yeah. May. But yeah. I really I, I don't see that happening at all, especially if you keep a low if the if the employment number in two months from now is right about where it's at right now or in three months from now, then I think you're going to see the Fed at least raising at least another one or two times over those next following meetings. You know, so is it going to be aggressive? I highly doubt it. I think you're looking at a quarter point at best. But still, that stuff that the market, I don't think, has factored in. I think the market has at best, you know, a half a point over the next two to three meetings. I don't think it has a full point factored in over the next four, which I think sure. it could actually be, you know. And that's so. where I was talking about right before we came with you. I see a lot of the risk, man, where the market's basically pricing in almost a best case scenario right now because I don't see any way mm -hmm. that it's going to be quicker than what the market's thinking in terms of, you know, I was talking about the, they're looking for potentially a 50 basis point cut by the end of the year. How do we mm -hmm. get there when we're waiting almost until the May meeting where they might stop and then you're going to mm -hmm. go 50? I mean, there just have to be such economic data that lines up to it. And we're still, folks, at a number that we have unemployment going down to 3.5 percent. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind as these they're numbers go forward. Cut, though, until, they're not going to cut until we have a lot of recessionary numbers. That's, yeah. when they'll put the, that's when they'll put the brakes on. And guess what, my friend? That ain't happening for a while. because No, and even the pausing, like you said, yeah. even the pausing, man, I find it very difficult to pause if the numbers are where they are right now. I mean, we're talking about you know headline numbers in the sixes for inflation, core numbers in the high fives, and an unemployment rate at 3.5%, man. Right. Well, Teddy, I appreciate the time as always, man. Folks, check out the Tiger Forex Thank Report you. outstanding newsletter. And uh, I look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, Teddy. Sounds good. Take care, Tom. Okay, man. Have a great one. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show.